Rocky King, Detective, starring Roscoe Carnes as Rocky King, chief of homicide of a metropolitan police force in an exciting fight against crime. Rock now, Rocky King, Detective, and Murder in Advance. All right, Gray. You've made your point. Don't you dare ever pull a stunt like that again. You know, Jason, sometimes you think you're as tough as the characters in those books you write. Wrote, you mean. As of right now, I'm through with the whole business. Don't be a fool, Gray. Well, Richard is right, Jason. Why do something you'll be sorry for later? I'm tired of this mess. Especially the way he's been trying to cut in on us. You mean we're going to have to get along without the writings of the great Jason Gray? Yes. Except for one last article I plan to do. And what's that? How I became a famous author. And why. Just a minute, you're no Look, parlor game? And so late? You two boys look as if you really mean it. I'll talk to you later. Well, what was all that about? Jason says he won't do another book. You're kidding. I don't think so. He'll come around. He better. I've already given a big advance on the story coming up. He sounded pretty definite, Phyllis. Oh? I think I can take care of that. I need a drink. Anybody else? No, thanks. Relax, Phyllis. I've got a $5,000 investment in that book. $5,000? He told me $2,500. Well, it was $5,000. I've got the canceled check in my office to prove it. Oh, wait till I get my hands on him. <laughs> you and half a dozen others. <laughs> you know, the fellow that draws and writes is Jeff Strongheart. It's really got an imagination. <laughs> What's your favorite comic character doing today? Well, uh, Mr. Strongheart has volunteered to go down in the ocean in a lead ball with a periscope on top of it. What for? Well, he's working for the government now. They're going to explode a new kind of bomb. <laughs> well, he'll have a tough time getting out of that one. <laughs> Not Jeff Strongheart. He's the bravest man in the world. <laughs> Who does write that silly stuff anyway? Let me see. Cohen Callahan. 
There must be two people. Or a nom de plume. <laughs> now, be sure and get home for dinner on time. We're having company, you know. Oh, are we? Who, who's coming? A young lady that our son feels sure at this moment could possibly be our future daughter-in-law. Really? He's made the final decision now. Well, it sounds like it, and he spent two hours last night explaining why. Uh, he says at last he's found someone who really understands well, that's him. good. We've been trying to do that for quite a few years ourselves. Well, who is this future charmer that's captured my son's heart? Her name is Lucy Ann Niles. They're a new family that just moved in the house across the street. They're from Chicago. They used to live in the Oak Park District. Oak Park? Say, they must have plenty of money. Oh, well, I haven't had time to find that out yet, but Mrs. Murphy and I are working on it. Uh, uh, Mrs. Murphy knows a night watchman that covers the Oak Park District, and she wrote him a letter. Well, let's take her chance and ha have her here anyway. She'll just love eating in the kitchen. <gasps> what will I have? Well, that's, that's, uh, that's your department, Mabel. But, but put this thing, make it impressive. You see what I mean? Let's, uh, I suggest we have a little caviar and champagne to start. Hello, Inspector King. Detective Hart, sir. I'm at 5 Northview Terrace, the home of Phyllis Bennett. Uh -huh. An author was found shot to death this morning. An author? Not Colin Callahan. Uh, who's he? Well, he wrote 20 Leagues Under the Sea with Jeff Strongheart. No, sir. This man's name is Jason Gray. He's quite a famous mystery story writer. Wrote himself right out of the picture, huh? Yes, sir. And under rather peculiar circumstances. According to the doc, he was killed between 1 and 3 o'clock this morning. But I didn't get the call about a half an hour ago. And nobody heard the shots? Well, if they did, they're not admitting it. They say there was a big party going on here last night. Plenty of noise. And where is he found? Well, in what they describe as one of the guest rooms. Is your call finished? Yes, sir, but I'll hold the body for you. I think you better have a look at it. Fine. I'll be right there. Where do you have to go, dear? Five Northview Terrace, Miss uh, Bennett's home. <gasps> Northview Terrace? That must be nearly as swank as the Oak Park District in Chicago. Well, I, I imagine that it is. Now, you see how fate is preparing me for my future daughter-in-law's appearance tonight? Well, don't joke about this thing. Junior will marry someday, you know. Yeah, but not for ten years anyway. <laughs> Unless he moves up in the mount them there mountains. Yeah, that's the only place he can get a license. <laughs> well, those ten years will just fly by. Uh, my little boy will be grown up. And then I suppose I'll be a grandmother. Yeah, so so will I if I'm here grandfather, one of the oldest. And as time marches on and life progresses, Junior's Junior will have a Junior and then I'll be a great-grandmother. Well, I'll be gone by that time, sure. But but I'll rest in peace if along the line somewhere they just change the name of Junior. But let's live a little while before the multiplication sets in. Now, look, put this on big tonight, Mabel. I won't eat any lunch, so I'll be so good and hungry. Well, what do you think I should have? Well, again, I repeat, that's your department. But you're a good cook, dear. So don't worry about it. I know it'll be fine. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, who's in the middle? What do you mean by that crack? Oh, just an idle thought. But I think it might suggest that the police are going to do most of their concentrating on us. After all, we were the last ones to see Jason Gray alive. Sorry, Hart, I suppose I should have knocked. That's all right, sir. I was just trying to line up the shot. Well, where'd you think it came from? Through the keyhole? No, sir, but I was interested in how the killer got in. Well, I imagine that you were. So this is the great author, great uh, Jason Gray, huh? Yes, sir. Was he famous? Well, he was pretty well known. You know, I kind of go in for those mystery stories. Hey, you got television set? Yeah. Say, do you look at him once in a while? Sure. Who's your favorite? Well, I'd rather not say. It's kind of personal. Uh, What's the story on this thing, Hart? Well, uh, Doc says he was shot once in the forehead with a small caliber gun. Apparently, the man was just about to go to bed. See, his shoes were untied. Yeah, who found him? Well, the butler when he brought his breakfast this morning. Uh -huh. Anything on him? No, nothing on him. We'll find these, this stuff on the floor beside him. You know, this notepad could be very interesting if we knew the rest of what he was going to say. All that's written here now is to whom it may well, concern, I guess. The rest of it's torn off. Well, let me see it. You're right. I got rid of this in a hurry, didn't he, And For a reason. I checked it. It's the dead man's handwriting, all right. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got to find the other part. Is this one of his books? Yeah, there are more of them over here, sir. Until death do us part. Listen to this one. Murder, mayhem, and Molly. <laughs> Sounds like a vaudeville act. Is, um... Any sign of murder weapon? No trace of it yet, but I've got men searching the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd better take his coat in, too. Yeah. Anybody else here? Well, there's a Miss Stanley, the dead man's girlfriend, yeah. Richard Paul, the secretary, and Phyllis Bennett, the publisher. Well, Miss Bennett's got herself quite a house here, hasn't she? Sure has. Well, as the way it looks to me right now, the most important thing, Art, is to uh, find out what he wrote in that pad there, where he tore it off. Oh, here's something that could help. The butler said that uh, these three people I just mentioned were having quite an argument with Gray last night. Really? Well, I'll start talking to him. 
You better have somebody take this stuff to the morgue. You get out and see what you can find on these people. All right. Let somebody else finish up for you. Okay. Hey, listen. What if I can't get anything at headquarters? Well, then try the newspaper reporters. They know most of the scandal anyway. Right, sir. Oh. Oh, good morning. Who are you? Uh, oh, this is uh, Miss Bennett, Inspector, the dead man's publisher. How do you do, Miss Bennett? I'm Inspector King, Police Department. I was just remarking to take you part with a nice home you have here. Well, I'm glad you like it. I certainly do. Well, I guess I'd better get started then. Well, nothing stopping you, son. You know what to do. Right. Hope you didn't think I was eavesdropping. Eavesdropping? Not at all. Sit, sit, sit right down, Miss... Uh, Miss Bennett, we have a cigarette? No, thank you. Well, then maybe I better oh, put... Oh, no, please, go right ahead. Really? All right, then I'll have one. Uh, when's the, um, last time you saw the dead man alive? Oh, well, I... What can you tell me about the dead man, too? Well, I can't tell you very much. Mr. Gray was hardly as flamboyant as some of the characters in his books. Mm -hmm. Actually, he was a rather mild person, quite unassuming. Well, I didn't know him or his books. He was a clever person. You know, his books just seem to write themselves. Why, I've seen him and his secretary, uh, Richard Paul, go into that study, and in a half an hour, Richard would be out with enough notes to, to type all day. Well, did they write here all the time? No, most of the time in their homes. Oh, oh, perhaps I should have explained, Inspector, that Mr. Gray, Mr. Paul, also Miss Stanley, spent the night here because of the party. Oh, I see. Well, I wonder if I could talk to Mr. Gray and Miss, um, Miss Stanley. Uh, certainly. And Mr. Paul, because he, they'll be right. Oh, Mr. Paul, that's yes. right. I had it wrong. It's not a half a dozen, then. At least two had excellent motives. You're including yourself, I hope. Possibly. But I'm not ignoring you, either. Now, what reason would I have to do a thing like that? Mm, possibly the best one. Money. That's your whole world, isn't it, Noreen? You didn't care anything about him. If he'd have quit writing, your little ride on the gravy train would have been over with. Your thinking doesn't quite make sense. If I'd killed him, it would have been a sure way to make him stop writing. Perhaps that's the idea you had in mind. Anyhow, I'm positive the police would be interested in that slapping match you two had last night. That's quite true, Miss Stanley. We are. How, oh, um, Miss Paul, how long have you been working with uh, Mr. Gray? About three years. Yeah. He hired me when he was planning his first book. He is, huh? What was the cause of the argument? I mean, what, what about it? What caused it? Well, Gray seemed to think that I was being a little too attentive to Noreen. Oh, were you? Jason was a jealous man, Inspector. And for no reason. Especially where he was concerned. That's right. I don't think I have enough money for it. Well, that's a nasty thing to now, say. Now, wait a minute. That's true, see. isn't it? Unless everybody tried, tried to get along. And that's the second time you mentioned money, Mr. Paul. Why? I think I can answer that, Inspector. I gave Jason a $5,000 advance on his new book, The Reluctant Corpse. He told Noreen he only gave her $2,500. Why don't you tell him how angry Jason made you two last night when he said he wouldn't finish the book? He'll put you out of a job with him, Miss Paul. Inspector, I can think of a lot of motives for murder, but losing a job isn't one of them. What about Phyllis here getting stuck with her $5,000? You've got a nerve. After getting so upset last night, you nearly broke Jason in half. Well, uh, I'll answer if you don't mind. I'm, uh... Taking a call here about another case. Hello? All right, sir. I did the checking on those three people, nothing at headquarters. But I did get some information from a columnist on one of the newspapers. Yeah, what is it? Well, the women have lived here all their lives. Seems that Miss Stanley used to be an entertainer, and Miss Bennett inherited her home in the publishing business from her father. But they say she's nearly broke. And what about the van? Well, they arrived on the scene about three years ago from the West Coast. They all met at a party, and they've been friendly ever since. Uh-huh. Well, you're not at the office. No, I'm at Richard Paul's apartment, 512, the Franklin Hotel. It's one of the right as you get off the elevator. All right, I'll be there in a few minutes. See you there. Wait a minute. Are you getting anywhere? Well, you can't tell. They're bouncing it around from one to the other. I don't know what's going to happen. I won't be too long, all right? Excuse the interruption, but there's so many people in town. We're very busy. Now, Miss Stanley, when's the last time you saw your fiancé alive? Well, I, I don't know exactly, but it was here in the study. It was about 12.30, I think. Uh, we were all together. That's right, and then Jason left. And that's the last time any of you saw him? Yes. What do you mean when he said he wasn't going to finish his story? He didn't mean that. Of course he didn't, because later Jason told me that he was going to start in the fourth chapter of The Reluctant Corpse today. Later? Oh, then you uh, saw him after the argument? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. I, I didn't tell you. I didn't think it would mean anything. Oh, but, uh, but it does. It's quite important. You see, we know that um, he was killed between one and three. Now, he left here at 12.30. What, um... You two people do after that. All right. Think it over. Everybody's staying in this house anyway.
We wouldn't think of leaving, would we? solve the case, but his superior had no faith in him. He was going to make the whole department look foolish, as well as himself. Now this Captain Henderson was certain. batting two for two. You're batting a thousand. I can say that for you. I thought it might be somebody else. Well, who'd you think it was? Bulldog Drummond? What'd you find? Well, there's part of a story on that tape recorder that uh, Jason Gray must have dictated to him. You're any good? Well, I like what I heard. Reluctant corpse. Fourteenth... Thirteenth chap... Thirteenth chapter. All right, wait a minute. Miss Bennett out there. house said he was just going to start on the fourth chapter today. I understand it. Nice place. How much do you think uh, a secretary to write it would get? I don't know, sir, but I don't think he'd afford a place like this, do you? No, I don't. It's a lot of line, isn't it? Yep. So we'll have to start trying to find out where the money came from. Well, maybe you got another job with somebody else. Well, how do you start this? This way, I guess. Charlie, Henderson crossed the room to where Lieutenant Harvey was kneeling beside the broken glass. It's ridiculous to think you can... Put wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not Jason again. Gray's voice. Well, who is it? Well, Richard Paul, the man I just left. Any... You understand this thing, Hart? Got an idea on it. I think I know why. Got a car here? Yes, sir. All right. Get over to the Bennett house, pick up Paul and take him down to headquarters. I'll right. bring this stuff in. Rocky King will be back in this week's exciting adventure in just a moment. In the meantime, friends, if you feel weak and run down, especially after a cold, sore throat of the flu, remember your weak, run-down condition may come from undernourished blood. Now, doctors call it iron deficiency anemia. We call it tired blood. Now, to feel stronger fast, take Geritol, the high-potency tonic that begins to strengthen iron-poor, tired blood in just 24 hours. Yes, in only one day. Geritol iron is in your bloodstream, carrying strength and energy to every part of your body. Now, just two tablespoons of Geritol, just this little bit, contains twice the iron in a pound of calf's liver. Tastes good, too. Now, here's a letter from Mrs. Harry Sterling of Webster, Massachusetts. She writes about her husband, who obviously had tired blood, and she says, my husband has been using Geritol since we heard you speak of it, and it is wonderful. When he used to come home from work, he would, put, he would sit down in the chair and say, I'm so tired. But since he has been taking Geritol, I don't hear him say he is tired. He would not be without Geritol. So if you're feeling tired and run down because of tired blood, particularly after a cold, sore throat of the flu, get Geritol, liquid or tablets, at your drugstore today. And to save one dollar, buy the large economy size. But be sure you get what you ask for, Geritol, G-E-R-I-T-O-L. Believe me, you'll feel stronger fast within seven days or your money back. <laughs> Mr. King, I'm assigned. Hello, dear. W will you make it home for dinner all right? I, I don't think so, Mabel. It depends on the next person I talk to. Oh, but you've just got to make it. There'll be six of us now. I went all out and invited the little girl's parents, too. Well, what for? We don't know them. I know that. When I asked them, I didn't think they'd accept, but they jumped at the chat. Are we all going to eat in the kitchen? Where else? It's the only place we've got. But I took care of it. I explained that you were from an old bohemian family and that you wouldn't eat anywhere else. Goodbye, dear. Yeah, I've been threatening for four years to put a dining room on that place. Here he is, sir. Oh, well, well, sit down. Sit down, Mr. Paul. Sit yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's yours. How long have you been writing Gray's books? What are you talking about? I'll show you. Lieutenant 
Lieutenant Harvey looked capable enough to solve the case, but his superior had... You no recognize place. your own voice, don't you? He was going to make the All whole right, department look foolish. Sure, that's me. But I didn't kill him. All right. Maybe you didn't. We'll find out. What's it all about? Well, I met Gray out on the West Coast about three years ago. He was a first-class bum and had been one most of his life. What do you mean, a social bum? No, he was an alcoholic. I met him on Skid Row. Mm -hmm. Are you doing all right at this time? No, but I had before, and when I wanted to write again, I decided to use Gray as my front man. Yeah, well, what happened? Why didn't you want to write under your own name? I don't think I have to tell you that, Inspector. No, you don't. But why? Personal reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a little out of my line, but I think I know. That's all. Just wait outside. Certainly. Gladick. You know what I'm thinking about, don't you, Hart? Certainly, but do you think he's a killer, too? I don't know. Well, don't forget the women. They had motives. Yeah, has the lab checked those clothes yet? Well, they hadn't a little while ago when they talked to Plenty. All right, I'm taking Mr. Paul back to Bennett House. Now, look, here's what I want you to do. A couple of things. Get in touch with Washington. Then you personally search his clothes and pay particular attention to his shoes. I was. Jason had brought along a new English thriller with him, and I thought I might find it in his room. No, dear. It's in the study where you left it after lunch. Oh, Inspector. Well, Richard, I, I didn't expect you back so soon. Yes, let's go in the study, please, Miss Bennett. There are a couple of things I'm sure that you'll be interested in. Certainly. You know who the real author is that's been writing the books that you've published? It's Mr. Paul here. Well, well that's absurd. Oh, well, no. No, that's the truth. Uh, Mr. Gray was just the front man for him. Can I see him in an inspector? Yeah. Here it is. Yeah. We had it figured right. Washington was also interested, but he thought possibly the name had been changed. Mm -hmm. Here's a little more information they gave me. See, how did you ever figure it was hidden in his shoe? Well, from something that Paul said, he said he was a bum on Skid Row. I used to work in the Bowery. You'd be surprised at the things we found in shoes. What's all the subterfuge, Inspector? Well, I, I, I don't think there is any, Mr. Paul. It seems all very clear. Now, this is the note that uh, Gray wrote, what he tried to hide. It explains that at one time, Mr. Paul here had been writing propaganda against his own country. That's what Jason meant when he said he was going to tell how he became a famous author and why. You killed him to stop him. No, I don't think so. I think the last thing Mr. Paul would want would be a police investigation. Then who would have a motive? Well, you would, Miss Bennett. You know, he spent a lot of money on these books. You felt if the public found out exactly what he was that they wouldn't sell. Oh, that, that's ridiculous. No, it isn't. It seems to be true. When he left here, you know, you said that you followed him. Remember, he told you all about it. <clears throat> He tried to change his mind, but he wouldn't listen. You needed money, you needed it badly, and you thought the only way that you could get it was through the continual sale of his books. So you figured out there was only one thing to do. You came back a little later on, you came to his room, and then you shot him. Well, you have a hard time proving that. Expected. All right, leave her here, Hart. Right. Just stick with him. Here, please. Well, here's a gun, Hart. This may be all the proof that we need. Take her in, I'll take care of him. Well, what are you charging me with, Inspector? Well, not murder, Mr. Paul. But I think there'll be a couple of FBI men at the office, and I'm sure they'll want to talk to you. Let's go. Remember, when you feel weak and run down, you may be suffering from what doctors call iron deficiency anemia. We call it tired blood. So friends, to feel stronger fast, take Geritol. 
The high potency tonic that begins to strengthen iron deficient tired blood in just 24 hours. And just imagine, you'll feel stronger fast within seven days or your money back. And by the way, get Geritol Junior for your youngsters. It's as effective as the regular Geritol is for you. Hello, Mabel. Yes, case is closed. I'm coming home. What, dear? Yes, 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 we got her. The gun checked it out for us. No, I, I'll, I'll be there for dinner. The what? Caviar and champagne. I wasn't going to bring that, dear. That's just for children. Well, you better get something else at the liquor store. Yes, dear. <laughs> well, I'll be right there. Wonderful girl, that Mabel. <laughs> music composed and played by Jack Ward. Tune in again next week for another exciting adventure of Rocky King Detective starring Roscoe Carnes. Detective is brought to you by Geritol.